Welcome everybody to Inside Hollywood on the Hudson. I'm your host, Michelle Servino. I'm with Mayor Mauro Raguso from mm. Little Ferry. Hello, Mauro. Hi, Michelle. It's great to be with you today. It's great for you to be here. Thank you so much for coming out to Hudson County. Thanks for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I know we have so much to talk about. I know you have a lot of really amazing things happening in Little Ferry, and I think it's awesome of you to come and spend some time here with us and let all our viewers know about all your amazing town. It is. It is an amazing town, and I'm happy always to talk about it. Awesome. So let's hear a little bit about yourself, because, you know, I think everybody knows, like, Mayor Raguso, but I don't think anybody knows, like, upfront, personal, kind of, Mauro, who you are sure. and where you're from. Well, I was originally born in Hoboken, in Hudson County. Okay. Uh, is that where you feel the... Uh, I, uh, and we go back to Hoboken often, especially in September uh, at St. Francis Church for the Feast of the Madonna there. Yes. Uh, so I always go back to Hoboken, uh, but... Uh, we moved into Little Ferry when I was five years old, and wow. I've lived there since then uh, with my parents on uh, Mariani Drive, and then I bought a condo and then bought a house when I got married uh, because, like I said, it is a great town to, to live and, and raise a family. And now I'm there with my wife, Valerie, and my daughter, Violet, and um, it's just a, a great family-oriented town, and this year is a big year for us. We're celebrating our 125th uh, anniversary. Wow. Uh, so the town was founded in 1894, and uh, at that time, all these smaller towns uh, were forming out of the big Lodi Township. Uh, right, so let's, let's back that up a little bit. So basically, what were all the towns that were included in the Lodi Township? Well, because I think Lodi is just Lodi now, right? Yeah, okay. th th there were many. And uh, it was a phenomenon called borough-itis. Uh, again, in 1894, all these surrounding areas uh, of Lodi Township decided to form their own communities. And so, um, Back then, Mayor James Pickens, the first mayor of Little Ferry, and a group of his neighbors said, you know, it's time that we have our own town. Mm -hmm. And um, and we've been uh, growing and progressing ever since. Uh, and, and, you know, interestingly enough, everybody says, well, how did they get the name Little Ferry? Yeah. Right? Well, because there was a, a ferry boat. Uh, before there was the Route 46 bridge connecting Little Ferry to Richfield Park, okay. there was a ferry boat that would go back and forth transporting people. In fact, that ferry boat goes back to uh, about the time of the Revolution, where wow. Washington's troops, uh, uh, they were trying to get away from the British, and they used that little ferry boat to, uh, to, uh, to cross over the Hackensack River to get to, to Little Ferry. That's so cool. I love the history behind it all. We, we have a very rich history. And so the town was formed by basically immigrants, uh, uh, Czech and German immigrants. Okay. And uh, initially, so how did an Italian family end up <laughs> with the Czech? And well, we we are uh, we are a very diverse community now. That's and awesome to hear. Yeah, that. absolutely, absolutely. So it started off with Czech and German immigrants, and then everybody moved in, and that's what makes the the town so beautiful uh, because our our un our our diversity is our strength, and uh, everybody comes together and works together to make the town progress. Uh, but. In the beginning, the major industry of the town was um, the, the brick making. So there were many, right now there are many man-made man lakes around. I remember the bricks saying Little Ferry. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I, I can't remember where I remember seeing them, but I, d I definitely remember that. Well, if you've ever been to the Empire State Building, okay. the bricks made in Little Ferry created the Empire State Building. That's so so I, cool. I like to remind people all the time that uh, Little Ferry uh, created probably the most famous building in the world. So Little Ferry created um, the most famous building in the world, and Jersey City always says that the um, uh, Statue of Liberty is theirs because it's in their <laughs> water. So I, I, I see it. I, I, I feel it. <laughs> Everybody's ta proud of their town. Of, so, course, you know. of course. How many people are in the, um, in the town of Little Ferry? So there are about 11,000 residents right now. Okay. And uh, we are centrally located. I mean, we are so close to all the major highways, Route 4, 17, Route 80, Route 46. Um, so everybody basically um, that knows Little Ferry knows that you could get anywhere within five to 10 minutes. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so our location is key. And uh, it's just a great town that's m moving, uh, moving along. I mean, right down the block from us, the American Dream Project is being built. And that wow. is sort of the new Mall of America. Yeah. Um, and uh, Teterboro Landing was created a couple of years ago with a lot of uh, new restaurants and shops. And so we're right now in the between. The landing is the is the uh, was the airport, right? Well, it's next to the airport. Okay. So yeah, there's uh, a big retail center that was created right next to the airport, which has been over that way many many yeah, years. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, it, it's amazing. Uh, what, what has happened there. And now that progress is moving a little further along the Route 46 corridor. 
a lot of development is occurring, retail, um, some housing. Uh, it's really bringing attention to, uh, to the area again. Uh, and, and then you see what's happening in Hackensack with all the development as well. Yeah. So a lot of people want to, they can't afford to live in New York City anymore, or they can't afford the <coughs> Jersey City, Hoboken well, rents. Well, Jersey City and Hoboken rents are now done. Like, it's very impossible to live there. Yeah, so, so they're, they're moving, they're moving uh, west, and they're, they're now in Little Ferry, Hackensack, Richfield Park, Pagoda, anywhere that you can get onto a, a bus real quick. Uh, to get to the city uh, and what's is your prime proximity real estate. to the city? Oh, we're about 20 minutes from by bus. 20 minutes? 20 minutes by bus. Does everybody there's hear a this? 20 route. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 20 <laughs> you better minutes. start putting your houses up for sale <laughs> yeah. and head on over to Little Ferry. Yeah. That's fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about um, you and your history. Um, I know you said that you immigrated to uh, Little Ferry when you were five years old. Mm -hmm. And then um, you went to school in? Sure. Well, I went to uh, Bergen Catholic High School. Okay. And then I went to uh, Rutgers uh, in New Brunswick. Nice. Where I got my, uh, my degree in political science and minored in history. And then I later got my degree in uh, my master's in public administration. So I was elected to the council. I was the uh, youngest elected to the council when I was 21 years old. That's a whole great story that I actually want to hear, but I want to do it in the next segment, so okay. we're going to take a break on that. All right, um, very good. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back right after this. Hudson TMA reminds you that a helmet can only protect your head if you wear it. Take a tip from Elizabeth and Xander. So just think of your helmet as part of your gear. You don't see a soccer player without shin guards. You don't see a basketball player without shoes. So don't ride your bike without your helmet. It's part of the gear. Let's take a look at proper helmet fit. The size of a helmet is very important. It should fit comfortably without rocking from side to side. The helmet should fit level on your head and low on the forehead, no more than one or two finger widths above the eyebrow. Adjust the lengths of the straps so that the buckle is centered under the chin. Side straps should be adjusted so that they form a V-shape under and slightly in front of the ears. Lock the slider if possible. Buckle the chin strap and tighten it until snug. No more than one or two fingers should fit under the strap. Lastly, make sure the helmet is secure and doesn't rock back and forth. If a big yawn doesn't pull the helmet down on your head, tighten the chin. Hudson TMA reminds you that whenever you are out on your bike, there are several things you must remember to stay safe. That means when you ride in the street, ride in a straight line with traffic on the right side of the road. Riding against traffic is dangerous. It puts you where the driver of a car isn't expecting you. Meaning it might turn in front of you, or worse, into you. And you know what that means. Ouch! And if you're riding with friends, always ride single file. And here's something else to remember. Always obey traffic lights and signs, and pay attention to lane marks. When you see one of these, stop. When you see one of these, yield. Traffic might be coming from one side or the other. Now, since your bike doesn't come with turn signals, use your hands. But always check for traffic before you turn. Do this to turn left, this to turn right. Also, some states allow you to do this to turn right, and do this to stop. Back from break with Mara Raguso. Thank you so much again for being here and coming out and bragging about your fantastic town. So we were talking a little bit before the break about um, how you were the youngest elected council person. Um, was that in New Jersey or? Well, in Little Ferry history. Oh, in Little Ferry history. Uh, yes, okay. and I was one of the youngest in Bergen County at the time, if not the youngest, uh, and one of the youngest in the, in the state of New and Jersey. And how old were you? I was uh, 21 years old when I was first elected to wow. the Little Ferry Council, and um, and now I'm 41, so uh, 20 years have gone by. Uh, so I was elected to the council and re-elected uh, two more times, and then when I was 28 years old, I was elected the youngest mayor in Little Ferry history. So I'm That's really fantastic. proud of that as well. And then I was re-elected uh, twice after that. Uh, so I've been serving as mayor for 12 years now. That is amazing. It, what's amazing is that my community trusted me, a 21-year-old. I was getting carded. Actually, I still get carded sometimes. <laughs> I'm actually That's a very good thing, <laughs> I'm actually. actually. Pr I'm actually proud of that. 
Um, but uh, yeah, what's amazing is they, that they trusted me at, at that young age. And um, that is very um, interesting, actually. What was the population of people um, like age at that time? I mean, because I would think that um, the older people would have been more hesitant to actually have a, like a young kid come in and start running this town. Well, you know, I had to I had to prove myself, okay. uh, and I had to work hard to earn their trust. And so, the first year that I was on the council, I was actually appointed uh, because the mayor was a councilman. He had become mayor, and they appointed me for a year. And then that November, I had to go before the voters in, a, in an election. Sure. And um, I, I was concerned uh, because I would go to people's doors and knock on their door and like, "Hi, I'm Councilman Mauro Ragusio," and they're like, well, "You know, they'd be looking behind me. You mean like, your father?" Where's your father? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that, that was um, that was always a funny experience, but you know, throughout that year, I, I, I proved myself mm -hmm. and, and showed them that I was willing to work hard and to and to listen. And that's the most important thing uh, that people forget when you're in elected office. You have to listen to people because mm -hmm. that's how you know where the problems are, what the issues are, what's good, what's bad, what needs to be fixed. And so during that year. Um, we, we really worked on a lot of projects, and then I was elected and then re-elected subsequently. And then, and then I decided to go for mayor when the mayor retired. Uh, and that was, that was also... Did he give you your blessing? Uh, I mean, uh, his blessing? He did. He did. Uh, we had worked together very closely, uh, uh -huh. Tom Querco and I. I was his council president for many years. Okay. Um, so he had the trust in me that I would continue uh, the good work ahead. And uh, I think we've done that. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. And we've had... We've had uh, we had some tough times in Little Ferry. You know, we had the the, the big <coughs> storm, Sandy. And, yeah, let's. Uh, I mean, you guys really had a very difficult time there. Let's talk a little bit about you know some of the devastation that happened and how you handled it. It was well. We had uh, you know I have to say that all the departments in my town, uh, all the people coming together, all the volunteers, you know, had prepared. Uh, we knew a storm was coming. Nobody right. expected that it would be to that level. Of course. Uh, it was just a shock. All, all, all over and it didn't really rain much but it was a, an event where the storm surge had just pushed up the Newark Bay up the Hackensack River and just pushed all the water into the community oh I had just bought my house six months before I just had been got married and uh, fixed fixed the house fixed in an up. area of the town that had never flooded before my house right. had never flooded um, I was at uh, a borough hall with uh, with all the departments all the great people who work for for Little Furry all the wow. volunteers and I remember my wife calling me up, and uh, it was around 11 o'clock at night, and she's saying, oh, my God, the house is flooding. The water is rising. Uh, and How frightening. It was. It was. And, um, you know, and then a, a large part of the town then, then, then flooded. And, and so then we had to make sure that everybody got out safely. I was going to say, like, were boats brought in? Like, was everybody, oh, yeah. like, yeah, yeah. the yeah. National Guard came in. It, the whole area in the Meadowlands area was affected, really. Um, and again, all the all the people that that helped, uh, the people from the community who were, uh, they were resilient and persistent, and they, we will rebuild, and and we did quickly and got Good. back on our feet. And now, uh, you know, we're experiencing you know development, uh, a, a new found um, a sort of uh, respect for the community because of our proximity to everything, yeah. and because of the the great people who live there. And so many things are happening in town now that I'm just so, you, you look back at six years ago, six and a half years ago, and you say, wow, look how far we've come from that storm when, you know, people for a while thought that's the end of the community. Uh, Did you have a lot of people that left the community or everybody really? Th there were there were some that, that, that left, but there are a lot of people who stayed. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, property values are back up now because property values took a hit after sure, the storm. Sure, of know, course. People were, people were nervous. Right. Um, but it was it was an experience <clears> that uh, <throat> hopefully we will we will never have to go through again. I don't think in our lifetime that will happen again. Yeah. I think and it's just one of those freak accident kind of things that happen. Right. Right. With weather. Yeah. I mean, we we have to we have to protect our environment. Mm -hmm. we, there is uh, you know climate change is out there and. There are things that we need to do as a, as a people, as a world, to make sure that you know our environment is safe, um, and these sorts of things won't be as as common. But you know, we we've moved forward in Little Ferry, and so many great things are happening, and that's why this. What is like your most proudest thing? You know, you've done so much development within the six years of mm -hmm. being mayor, and then it was how many more years that you were council person? 
I was a uh, councilman for seven years. Seven and I'm years. I'm now mayor for 12 years. Oh, 12 years. Okay, mm -hmm. so in, in that span, what can you say is your probably your most proudest moment in development for the city? Well, I would have to say that <clears throat> our uh, our recovery from Sandy okay. and how we we did that uh, together okay. as as, uh, as one big family, yeah. everybody helping each other out is probably the proudest moment. But there are so many projects that are happening from from new fields uh, uh, that we were able to construct after Sandy using grant money, uh, new baseball and football and softball fields. Uh, uh, a, a soccer field that was before Sandy, but mm -hmm. these are all things that we've done together as a community. Now we're doing a major infrastructure project where every year we uh, not only repave, but we do new curbs and sidewalks uh, and new drainage uh, on streets. So we're going to do the entire town probably over a 20-year period, but we've already done in the last four years a, a, a good a good chunk of it. So I'm really excited about the changes that are happening, the investments. Uh, that are occurring in in the community and and people want to move into a town that that works well right. uh, that takes care of its streets uh, you know picking up yeah, I always say like being mayor you know <coughs> it, it's not really political because there's no Democrat or Republican way to pick up the garbage and keep streets safe you know right. we just we all have to come together and and do what's right for the town so I think that if I'm understanding you correctly that really the most important thing that you feel is basically making a huge improvement in the overall family lifestyle for Little Ferry. Is that what you would say? Yeah, I, I would say, uh, again, the, the proudest moment was post-Sandy. Post-Sandy. How people didn't give up. Yeah. You know, we all worked together mm -hmm. to rebuild. And now we are experiencing a new fountain, new development in, in the community. Mm -hmm. The people from the outside are now looking at Little Ferry as a place that they want to call home or they want to open up a business in. And that's the, exci the exciting part. And how's the businesses downtown? I know a lot of towns are suffering, like Hoboken right now is currently like having a lot of trouble with their downtown. Mm -hmm. How is your business district doing? Well, we are, ex right now there's a major development of a CVS project, that, nice. uh, CVS that's opening right across from Borough Hall, which mm -hmm. a lot of people are excited about. There's a development that's going to happen right next to it as well, a medical office building along Route 46. Uh, that corridor is changing rapidly. We have the new auto zone that opened up, and now there's going to be a, a retail center that's going to open up in, this, in the center of 46, right in our community at the corner of Liberty and 46, uh, with, again, medical office space, retail, restaurants nice. downstairs. Uh, and then along our waterfront, there's always interest along our waterfront. Oh, waterfront because people want to live next, yeah. oh, to, absolutely. next to the waterfront. So yeah. they're, they're always, the developers are always interested in, in coming in and, uh, and talking. Talking about that stuff. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, Maura, we're going to take a short break. Sure. Um, and we are going to come back because Mr. Raguso has so much to talk about with the 125-year anniversary, right? That's right. right. Absolutely. So 125-year anniversary of Little Ferry. We'll be right back. be able to police ourselves because we don't want anybody to tarnish our badge. When internal affairs complaints are not handled properly, the public may believe that most officers commit crimes, when in fact that's not true. Most officers are professional. If, the, if complaints aren't taken properly and the community that we serve doesn't have a trust in the police department, I mean, there, there has to be legitimacy. Um, if, if the community doesn't trust the police, how could we effectively serve them? And by having a really comprehensive internal affairs unit that handles the complaints properly and people have trust in, in the system, it enables us to do our entire job as a police department much better. We need the community as much as they need us. So that citizen that has lost trust in the community could be a very important witness for us tomorrow. Introducing the MyJCMC app, powered by Practice Unite. The free MyJCMC app puts the power of healthcare at your fingertips. Go to the concierge for access to referrals, scheduling, and appointments. See emergency room wait times and get directions to Jersey City Medical Center health locations. Read the latest JCMC news through their social media feed. Find a doctor and more. The MyJCMC app. We belong to you. We're back, everybody, with Mara Raguso from Little Ferry, and he is celebrating 125 years of his community, Little Ferry, Absolutely. New Jersey. Um, Mara, 
you know, I know you guys had a big gala, a very successful gala, yes, actually. Yes, it was. It was. Um, yeah. And that was, you know, about a week ago. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're uh, we're still uh, trying to recover from the great party. That <laughs> <laughs> it was I always great. like a good party. It was a great party. We had over 300 people attend. Uh, a lot of current residents, uh, residents that have uh, been there forever, residents that have moved out and wanted to come back to celebrate. Mm -hmm. it, it was great. Um, and uh, it was a wonderful party. Again, everybody coming together, celebrating a great town. We had a special cake uh, made by the cake boss himself, nice. who was a little furry resident. Actually grew up uh, on Mariani Drive with, uh, with all of us. Um, and uh, we're very proud of the success that uh, Buddy Velastro has had over the last couple of years. That's fantastic. So what was the reveal of this amazing cake that he did? Well, it really wasn't a reveal. Okay. I mean, it, it was out there from the whole time. Okay. So, so there wasn't uh, like, okay, everybody's surprised. Okay. It, it was front and center next to the podium. So okay. people walked in and it basically he recreated the borough seal on the cake. Oh. Oh, okay, so this pretty um, seal right here? Yeah, he recreated okay, the awesome. birth. And there's that little fairy boat that we talk about, right, how that went back and forth. And then, of course, uh, the word progress, uh, right. which is right in our uh, borough seal. It is our motto, and that's what moves us forward. We make progress every day in Little Fairy. That's fantastic. So it was a great event, but <clears throat> that really kicked off a year's worth of events because in June, we're going to have a circus, and in September, we're going to have a parade. Uh, we're going to have a weekend of concerts and a family fun day, fireworks, uh, a food truck uh, gathering. Um, there's it's going to be so many fun events. And the 125th committee has been working. So I am so proud of this group. Uh, really? Michelle. Let me let me just tell you, uh, uh, six months ago, we appointed some members of the committee. And, and then you think to yourself, okay, are they going to get along? You know, everybody sure. comes from... A, a different perspective sure. and I watched them in action under the leadership of the chairman uh, Frank Fuchs uh, over the last couple of months how hard they work to put together this great dinner dance so I am so excited at what's going to happen in uh, at the at the carnival at the circus at the parade because I know that this group they can accomplish great things so there's a whole calendar of events that is going on for the next six months yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's going to be an event in, in June uh, with the circus uh, coming to town the last weekend in June. And okay. then in September, um, towards the end of September, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that is the weekend that all the events are going to happen from concerts to the family fun day to the firework display. And then the parade. We haven't had a parade in a long time in town. Okay. In a long time, there hasn't been a parade. And I, I never understood why. Uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, parades can really go in many different directions. Like, either they're really attended well, or then, or they sort of aren't. So, and it's always like a bummer when they aren't. It, yeah. Um, but it sounds like Little Ferry has a really tight-knit community do. experience. And I think that... We do. You think that you'll have a success? I think we're going to be successful. That's if awesome. uh, If you look at the gala... Uh, and, and initially, everybody said, well, who's going to come to this gala celebration? And, you know, the tickets were, we tried to keep the ticket as low as possible, but we had to pay expenses, so they were $100 a ticket. So hey, people listen, are saying $100, $100 is, is a lot fair. of money. No, I think it's fair. It, well, it's fair I, for what they got. Oh, okay. Uh, because it was an amazing dinner, and then there was the entertainment. Where was it? It was at the Fiesta in Woodridge. Oh, yeah, the Fiesta. Uh, so they got a cocktail hour, and they got uh, the Viennese, and they got a, a, a four-course dinner, and then, of course, open bar. So for a hundred bucks, and then everybody walked away with uh, a keychain and nice. some other great things. So um, we thought at first, you know, people were saying, "Well, that's a little too pricey, pricey for me." We were saying, "But listen, it's going to be worth it. You're going to get a lot for it." <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, with all the promotion of the committee, and uh, we just we got up to three hundred. I don't think we could have taken any more actually, because then there wouldn't have been a dance floor. So again. You start off thinking, is anybody going to show? And I then know. you wind up with a night like like we had last week. And well, that's just amazing. So, I was so, I'm always proud to be the mayor of Little Ferry, but last weekend was just an incredible, incredible night of celebration. That's fantastic. Okay, so circus is coming. Um, but wait a second. I, I just thought of something. We talked about... Um, we talked about uh, Buddy Velastro being uh, a, a um, living in, in Little Ferry, he right? He did. He lived in Little Ferry. Grew up in Little Ferry. Yeah. But I re didn't you do um, something with him? Like, were you on an episode? Or well, something? I was on the episode of the Cake Boss. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And and that was a reveal of a cake that okay. he had done. Uh, um, I think it was about. 
six or seven, maybe seven years ago. Okay. And Buddy uh, had attained all this success, and we decided to honor him as a community. Uh, we gave him, as we have given to others, the, the key to the borough. And uh, they decided to film that as part of the show, oh, that's uh, so cool. which was a really great I think experience. I seeing uh, that. Yeah, so everybody, uh, you know, came to Borough mm -hmm. Hall and he unveiled this great cake, which were basically, uh, I remember on the top of the cake, he, he had me and him at made out of Tootsie Roll or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and Very I remember cute. my mom wanted to keep the figure of me. Aww, <laughs> so she said, that is so cute. She said, well, I want to take him home. And I'm like, all right. Well, well, she's you're, allowed. You're, she's your mom. mom. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. <laughs> now, I don't think a lot of people know this, but um, I know that you um, did a little acting work, right? I was in a documentary sort of movie called yep. uh, We Light the Tradition. We Light the Tradition yep. um, with, um, what's his name? Roberto, Roberto Panzini. Panzini, yes. yes. So my family, my father, uh, immigrated to the United States from a uh, town in Italy called Molfetta, uh, yes. which I love very, very much. Everybody loves oh, Molfetta. Molfetta. If you're from Molfetta, you are like in love with that town. I, I, so I am very proud uh, that my roots are in, in Molfetta, and I visited many times. Yes. I was actually there last year where I had the great honor of actually meeting Pope Francis. Wow. Um, so Molfetta is uh, just such a great part of who I am. We have to bring him so, to Hoboken. Yeah, yeah, that, absolutely. You know, for that special, um, right. know, they bring, the, they bring the, uh, the Madonna, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. there is, the tradition is uh, that every September, on um, the Feast of the, the Madonna, which is just around September, September 8th, September, yeah. um, those who had immigrated from Molfetta, there's a great committee, uh, the Society of the Madonna uh, of the Martyrs, that put together an incredible feast over a three-day period. Uh -huh. uh, and on that Saturday, they have a procession of the beautiful statue of the Madonna. Yes. And so Roberto, who lives in Molfetta, decided to do sort of a documentary about the, the lights of the mm -hmm. feast. And so we brought over uh, these great lights uh, to, to light the tradition yes. and to continue, to continue the, f the feast uh, in, in Molfetta. And I have to give uh, great credit to the committee that puts together that feast every year. I mean, yeah. it's so touching. It really is. I, I actually have participated in yeah. it multiple times, and actually it is really something very special. Yeah. And I think what is most historical is how everybody takes the boat ride around uh, and how everybody's fighting to get on the... Absolutely. <laughs> on, the, on the ferry fighting. boat that goes around the... On, on the, the, the Hudson River. Right. And, and, but everybody and that, wants to be on the one with the Madonna. Everybody wants to be on the one with the Madonna, absolutely. What, uh, what's amazing is that it actually follows the tradition that's in Molfetta, where right. they put the Madonna on a boat in Molfetta and they take her out to, to sea because all the fishermen, uh, and Molfetta has a, a large uh, yes, fishing, fishing industry. Uh -huh. So the Madonna is very important to all the, uh, all the fishermen. They put her on this, these massive boats and they go out and parade in, in, in the waters uh, outside of Molfetta. So in order to recreate this, here the committee decided to put her on a ferry boat and bring her onto the onto the Hudson River. Yeah, it's and it's really touching. It is very touching. Yeah, yeah. And I think I find this to be absolutely hysterical yeah. that everybody's fighting to get onto the one <laughs> boat. But, absolutely. Um, Mauro, I can't thank you enough um, for coming you. out to um, the show today. Inside Hollywood on the Hudson is thrilled to have you here and to talk about your fantastic town. I wish you nothing but the best always and um, that's it, everybody, for Inside Hollywood on the Hudson. Thank Have you. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank, Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.